Hello Identity 5 Gamers, it's time for some more XXX Holic crossover and to check out a couple of my match replays. I don't have a lot of time to record today unfortunately, so let's just get right into it. So here we are with day three. Let's take a look-see. This is the monkey's paw here from the show. I've actually continued watching the show. I think I'm on episode like 17 right now. It's pretty good. You know, there was actually a really, really good episode about like the meaning of happiness or whatever. It was actually a very interesting episode. Uh, I found one, Miss Yuko. Are you making an inventory of the warehouse? You've done well today, Watanuki. Is it a customer? It's the customer with the strongest wish. Did you suddenly get smarter or something? This manor is a western architecture filled with western decor. So when I came across something from Japan, I immediately brought it here. It looks like a woman's accessory. Why don't she cross the ocean to participate in the carnival games? Interesting. Wait, is this like lore for a character? Hmm. This may not have occurred at the same time. And besides that, the accessory's owner isn't an actual participant. She was not here. Only the accessories she once loved remain in the manor and those who came because of them. People entered the manor and joined the games because of them? The host of the games did promise them a generous reward. The accessories in the manor and the clues promised by the host may be the last thread of hope for those who wish to locate the missing lady. I see. Was that like actual lore for a character or something? I don't know. Oh yeah, we got the, the fox Odin, that's cool. Yeah, the, the fox, there's like the, some foxes in the show that like feed people and it's very like they make really good food. Okay, cool. Uh, let's take a look at this and yeah, I've done all the matches now so we can get the freaking Watanuki portrait. Yippee, there we go. So now we've, we've done everything here, which is awesome. And dreams, I don't think we really need to do anything with this anymore. Although my wish does have nine likes. Let's go, dude, that's awesome. But yeah, there's our daily XXX Holic stuff for the day. And I also got a small gift from a friend from Haley Stardust, uh, got me the little whatever this is, the little pet. I don't really know what to call it. It's really cute though. Uh, saying, enjoy some old tunes while you're sitting on a rocket chair. <laughs> this is literally a pet, dude. Look at this thing. It just flies around and just goes wah, 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 wah. <laughs> That doesn't actually even imagine. Oh, that'd be so freaking funny. There we go. Yippee, Thanch. I think that's pretty good. Thanch. <laughs> For those who don't know, Thanch is how I say thank you sometimes. But yeah, woo, we got the, the, the photograph. Yeah, it's so cute, dude. I actually kind of love it. Anyways, today we are watching a couple of my Axe Boy matches. So Axe Boy was free a couple of days ago, and I just had to give him a try. And I actually just want to say that this match... I got so lucky in, right? I don't want to say that I'm good as Axe Boy, I think, because I've barely played Axe Boy, right? But in this match, I got extremely lucky. Like, my snipes, dude, my snipes are actually on point. So, like, my, my freaking spirit snipes or whatever the heck, the, lo the lost souls or whatever. So, I'm going against Little Girl, Perfumer, First Officer, and Cowboy. Little Girl's already saying, help me. What is this? <laughs> uh, I think this is the... Yeah, look at that snipe. That snipe number one. Already got a snipe, because I knew that she was there. I was like, well, if she's not going to come around, I can just snipe her with the lost soul. And let me tell you, the snipes that I get in this match are make me look like a pro axe boy. I'm not even joking. And again, I don't even play this character. I've literally played this character. I think before this, I played this character maybe like three or four times. Uh, so I, I, I did get very, very lucky. So I see that the cowboy's coming in here. I kind of just, yeah. I, I force him to go for the uh, for the lasso there because the thing is, okay, I missed, I missed one there. It's not gonna hit all of them though. But I go for my aggression gameplay, just get a hit under the cowboy. Um, and I just start going after them once again. Put down the restful road, go shnium. Go shnium again, shnium. <laughs> and do I target the cowboy? I think I, I don't remember actually. Yeah, the, I don't I don't think the beginning uh, of this match was like anything too special. I get the blink and able to down the little girl. Cowboy is already getting the last already. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's so silly. But I think I'm able to, let's see. I don't know if I am able to chair the little girl successfully before the cowboy. You know, I, I, put, the, I put the little girl down. And I think I'm able to get the cowboy down here, not with the spirit, but the spirit speed boost, boom. And, oh, hold on, boom, there we go. <laughs> he maybe could have flywheel there to extend his, uh, or no, wait, I'm sorry, he doesn't have flywheel, that's freaking tied. I was looking at little girl, little, little girl has flywheel, but the cowboy uh, does not. So yeah, put the little girl back into the chair, and I believe this is when I pick up the cowboy and I just put him right next to uh, the little girl's chair, I think. Yeah, because I, I expect first officer 
two have tied, but I didn't see him coming in. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, that was Perfumer. Perfumer came in uh, a lot sooner than I expected. So I'm like, well, I guess I'll just uh, trade. And I know the little girl's heading out somewhere around there because I can see the trail. But look at this snipe, dude. Look at this pro. This is like a pro Axe Boy snipe because I don't even know where she is, right? I just I have a good assumption of where she is and watch. Boop. I just get her down. Good thing is like if I'm a survivor, where would I be at this like in this time, right? That's what I was thinking. And I was like, well, I know that there's a pallet ahead of there. So if I just like kind of strike where the pallet is, put down the spirit, I just boom hit her. And it's like I didn't even see her. I had no idea she was there. And like don't get me wrong, a lot of it was luck, but it's just like wow, that was just a very very good snipe. And there, there are multiple cases of really good, really good snipes like that. I also love uh, when you're holding, <laughs> when you're holding. Actually, look, another snipe. The thing is, I know where he was going. I knew exactly where he wanted to go. So, boop. I don't know if it's just because the survivors were a bit predictable in where they wanted to go. If they had enough distance, so they felt comfortable with it. But I was just getting some really, really solid snipes here with my flares, um, or whatever, or whatever the heck you want to call it. So I put down a funny. That, oh, that perfume actually looks cool. You see that? That little, little perfume. It had like a. She went like craw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just coming to that. Missed the uh, flare, but the speed boost. Yep. Down goes the cowboy once again. And look at the, he has an axe boy pet. That's actually so funny. <laughs> Yo. And I'm just like I'm sitting here because Perfume is trying to body block, but it's like this is a horrible location to body block, especially since I can just get you down. Perfume says I'm stuck, but it's like you did that to yourself. That was very silly. Um. Yeah, and I forget exactly. Oh, I I, I pick up the Perfume because I didn't think I'd be able to chair the cowboy. I thought he was gonna be able to struggle free. So I, I, I dropped the cowboy, put the perfumer down instead, swapped the teleport, and then I just kind of watch over the cowboy. Yeah, okay, so I hear that the first hour is coming in, thanks to that, and I want to try and get a snipe on him, right? And that's my, that's my goal, is I want to try and get a flare snipe on him, and I think I am able to do that, however, uh, I'm unable to get the down. So I get the flare snipe, and I try to hit him, but I hit the chair instead, and I was like, that was a dead game if I didn't hit the chair. Like, they, they would have been dead for sure. Uh, I chased him just for a second because I knew that was actually him and not the perfumer. I chased him just for a second to hopefully try to make him use a watch. He doesn't use his watch though, which was a bit sad. And yeah, I know she perfumes. But anyway, I just wanted to make her use her last perfume because I knew that was the last one. And then, boop! <laughs> Get another snipe, dude. I have hit so many of those today. Uh, and again, it's just, I was surprised myself that I was hitting these because, like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't play these characters. So again, a, a good amount of it was, again, luck. Uh, so I just put down a wrestle road here because I know that the cowboy uh, is dead if I can uh, hit him down there. Because like, he he kept harassing me the whole game. When I feel like a good amount of the time he probably should just left, right? Uh, I try to get back to the wrestle road, but it already uh, it goes away. So I go back to pick up the perfumer, and I don't think she's dead on chair. I can't exactly remember, but you know I'm still in a very very good position. Two ciphers are mating. First officer is the one decoding. It was a bad decoding speed unless he used the watches. And then I can just kind of call, watch back over the cowboy, who I know has no self heal, because I know he's used up his self heal. So all I have to do is just wait for the first officer, to, uh, first officer to come on in, which he does indeed. He probably should have just waited out, maybe tried to go for, uh, for the dungeon there. But he heals, and he's able to get the cowboy back up. And I get a lucky hit onto the first officer, and I don't think he rescues in time. No, he does. Okay, he rescues in time, um, and he falls down, but. Yeah, they, they got a bit confused. They probably should have gone across that pallet, but I, they probably were not expected to be rescued. And well, here's Cowboy once again, and he's just, he, he keeps harassing, which he really shouldn't be, honestly. He really should not be harassing this whole time. So I just get this for the speed boost, and boop, down he goes. And I want to say that they just surrender here and save me the time. Because uh, I go back for, I think, is it Perfumer? I think I, I go back for the, because I know the Cowboy has no self here, right? I know I go first off. Okay, I, I go first officer first because I downed him first. Because the self heals, like, you know, they take some time. So and then I go for perfect second, and then that's it. Yep, this cowboy had no self heal. So yeah, I got some pretty awesome snipes in that game. I was really, really proud of it. Especially since I don't really play this character too often. Next, here's another Axe Boy match. Like I said, we have two matches to check out today with my Axe Bro. So we're going up against Female Dancer, Cheerleader, and Bomber, and Coordinator. And, you know, this is a this is an okay team, you know. You got, some, you got Cheerleader's probably the best character on the team. Female Dancer's pretty good. I just do that for the speed boost. Um, early game, I'm not really like looking for snipes. Again, I, I wasn't really looking for snipes half the time. A lot of time when I use the Lost uh, Soul, I just want the speed boost, right? That's what it is a good amount of time. And I'm chasing the coordinator here, and I'm like, I'm fine with this. Because if I can make her waste her gun so early, which I think she used it like right here, and I do get hit by it. Yeah. I was kind of hoping she wouldn't do it. I, I knew I was out in an open area, but I was kind of hoping to like maybe uh, try and bait it out. But I couldn't really do much there in the open area. Yeah, like I was trying to say earlier, the flare, whenever like Axeboy tries to go for like the little flares, but I barely missed it right there. 
Uh, but I do just deed and get the get the basic attack. But I love how he waves. It looks like he's waving. So what I've done whenever I play uh, Axe Boy sometimes, I, I, I went friendly Axe Boy a couple times, but I love just waving at people with that. Like I, I just go to like an area where I can use the ability and then I just start waving and I just go walk up to people while waving to them. And I think it's so cute, dude. I think it's just so cute. I even had like this funny joke about walking backwards while waving. And it just looks so goofy, dude. And I call that, that's that's my new thing, and I'm calling him the Bax Boy. Whenever I walk backwards while waving, I call him the Bax Boy instead of Axe Boy. Because <laughs> he's just moving backwards. It looks so goofy, I'll have to show you sometime. Okay, anyway, uh, yeah, Cheerleader is coming on in for the rescue. And the thing is, uh, with Axe Boy, I'm not as aggressive. I, I like chair camping a little bit more because his camping is pretty decent. Um, and he's he's more of a tie hunter, right? He's, he's I was looking more for ties because I was trying to do his deductions. And I get I did get a lot of his deductions done, but uh, that's that's really what I've been doing is trying to get his deductions done. I think I get a snipe. Uh, I I, th I swear I get no. I just get the speed boost. Uh, boom! Yeah, he gets a massive speed boost whenever he does that. It's very nice, especially when you're in uh, the areas with the freaking trees, because then you can just get the little mini restful road boost, and it just it's really nice for him. It really gives him a lot of speed. Um, which is quite nice, but when nobody takes down your trees, that means you can't really put up any more. Which can be frustrating because there are some areas in the map... I missed my flare again. But, the thing is, I forced it to come back towards me by her avoiding that. So yeah, I, I, I'm doing pretty well here. Uh, I know the coordinator was done on chair because Chiller saved after half. Which, she maybe she probably should have gone for a bu bu. Uh, which I don't really know why she did. I, I, I definitely would have gone for a pew pew right there. I see the coffin, so that's good. Uh, but like, yeah, this side of the map is just like completely littered with trees, dude. Absolutely littered. Whereas the other side has nothing. So I can't really go for any of the spirits when I'm over there. And yeah, right now I'm just chilling because I'm really just aiming for ties in most of these matches. But here comes the female dancer here. I miss another flare, which is sad. And I get the hit onto the female dancer. But I don't think the female dancer sets up like any box traps at all this match. At least I don't really remember. Uh, and yeah, we were, I know there was going to be something happening there. Again, she literally probably should have just gone for like a PP or a flywheel because she still has a lot of resources. But she is going to be able to go in the uh, the coffin. And yeah, this is, that, there's no point in doing that. There, There is absolutely no point in doing that, I feel. Because um, it, it takes a while to recharge. I feel like that would just be best to save for your last kite. Because again, she does, have, she does have the coffin on her right now. So I'm going to have to deal with that. I go for teleport. And... I think they moved the coffin actually, because I didn't. I, I I knew where the coffin was, but I didn't see it. Right when I was when I was here, I was like, "Huh, where's the coffin?" I'm, I'm like looking around, like, "Where the heck is this coffin at?" I just got, I just got the embalmer out of here, but now I'm like, "Where the heck was the coffin?" Because it usually shows you the coffin, and then I'm like, "Hmm, wait, if I can't see it, it must be in the two-story area." And lo and behold, where's the cheerleader in the two-story area? So they must have moved the coffin up here. Um, that or like, I just somehow didn't see her get up here. But I, I, I was pretty happy with uh, the fact that I had a good idea of like where she would be if I couldn't see the freaking coffin. Um, and yeah, there's not really much that Chilliter can do here. There is the fast box to work with, but the flare. And then, boop! The flare plus the hit on the embalmer was so good because now nobody can rescue safely. I was so happy about that. Even though it was kind of just like by chance, I also thought my, somebody might, might have been there. So I just, you know, I, I always swing through a pallet if I have to, uh, if I'm carrying a survivor. Um, you know, it, it's it's nice. It's, it's definitely nice to do. And then I try and go back in here, because uh, he, he puts down the pallet, actually, to, you know, protect him with a little bit of a wall. And he's able, I think, to... Oh, no, he's not. Okay, I thought he was able to finish the cipher. But unfortunately, he is not able to finish the cipher. And then I teleport to the one that I see being worked on. Uh, sorry, pal. Let's <laughs> have to wait for a second. And I get a snipe. I guess I think is I knew like where she wanted to escape to, right? Because like if I'm if I'm a survivor, where do I want to go? I want to go into that area, break line of sight, because uh, it's also a good kiting area, right? But I was like, hmm, if I'm a survivor, where do I want to go? And I think like when you're playing hunter, like that's like one of the biggest things uh, that you have to think about all the time. Is like if I'm a survivor, where the heck do I want to go? And I'm pretty sure the embalmer actually gets the rescue here because I'm not paying attention as much. I think? I don't actually remember. I feel like he gets this rescue because I think I go like... I'm not sure. I, I, I don't, I'm not really entirely sure. I think I might be like looking to see if he's like at a dungeon or something. Oh no, I just... he just... never mind. Okay, I see him. I see him, I see him. And I try to hit him with like a flare and yep, I hit him with a flare. <laughs> and then that's it. Okay, I think there was a game where I played as Axe Boy and like... I, I didn't... Uh, I, I, I let somebody rescue for free just by being stupid. But yeah, there we go. 
Another 4K as the Axe Bro. And finally, uh, the last match here. This one actually isn't really too special or anything. Uh, this is just a ranked match. I also have the Blue Butterfly, as you can see. I'm trying to come up with a name for the little Blue Butterfly. I don't know if there's like an official name that the community has for it, but I I'm trying to think of a good name for this Blue Butterfly. So if anybody has any good name ideas, definitely let me know. I might just come up with one of my own. But yeah, we're up against this Fool's Gold here, and we also have a somewhat canon team for Ashes of Memory. We have Journalist, uh, I'm, I myself as Entomologist, Composer, and Prospector. If only Composer was swapped out for uh, Novelist, then it would actually be the new canon team since freaking Frederick Kreeberg is gone. But I think we just had like really, really good coordination on this game, uh, because I'm pretty sure... Uh, yeah, he, he actually goes back to Journalist. I was surprised about this, because I thought he was chasing Composer, and he actually is able to get a hit onto the Journalist, which I was pretty worried about. Uh, early game, and I thought she was gonna transition towards me here, but I don't think she does. Oh no, she, no, she, yeah, because she based that she doesn't want to get down to it, and then gets the Orpheus body block, I think. Yep, gets the Orpheus body block. Yeah, that was that was really really good for her, um, and I try to actually use my bees to help support her here, but they don't end up helping. She actually just goes down, um, which I was really sad about because sometimes the bees can help extend a kite, uh, and I don't really know where she is. I only see like the trail of fool's gold. And I'm like, oh, right here is perfect, but then blink. If it wasn't for him using Blink there, I definitely could have extended the kite. So I kind of just shove him a little bit. Um, and then I just uh, call back my bees before he can hit him a second time. So yeah, as you can see, he went for a swing there, which bought like a second, right? It buys a second, but you know, I probably would have just been better off decoding. But now, Prospector is going to come in for the rescue. I think he actually, uh, I think he actually used the rock on his Cypher maybe, so he couldn't actually... Or no, he, he finished his Cypher. I'm sorry. He, he was the first one to finish his Cypher. Uh, Composer is obviously Cypher rushing down over here. And I just finished my Cypher. I think I'm going down in this area because I know that there's two Cyphers right over here. And the Composer's almost finished with his Cypher. I see that. So all I have to do is just let the Composer know to like take over my Cypher. And then I can just go work on the other one that's right ne right next to the other one. Um, and yeah, these two are they're, they're, they're taking all the action right now. Uh, I think the only action I get is toward the end game. But yeah, the thing is, like, I, I think he still goes after Joseph. But the Prospector he is here to, to harass, dude. He is here to harass. And, you know, a lot of me wanted to go in and help with my bees. But the thing is, I was like, well, Journalist still has resources. She still has Orpheus. Um, does take a hit there. And we also have Prospector here to harass. So, I think he might go for a small stun here. Create some distance. Yep. Not not a crazy big stun, but it helps it helps the Journalist get some distance, which was you know, a good amount of distance. And I said take over my Cypher to the Composer because that one was, like, further along. And, yeah, now we're decoding the last two Cyphers over here while Journalist is taking the kite and she actually transitions toward us i think eventually which i was a little nervous about uh no she goes around i i, I swear i swear he eventually starts coming for us i think he might like switch targets uh to the composer any second now and i was like oh no please be able to finish your cypher i think he finishes the cypher yeah he gets a little greedy but he fish finishes the cypher and i'm like don't if you're gonna kite don't transition toward me because i'm trying to prime the cypher right it's only a 50 percent so the composer he's just running around here but I, I think he runs out of places to run to uh, so he eventually, yeah, yeah, he can't really loop the shack anymore because of that. So he starts running down towards me, and I was like, hold on now, buddy, hold on. Uh, I'm trying to prime this cypher here. <laughs> trying to prime this cypher. And here's where I think the Fool's Gold makes a big mistake. Besides the fact that he's been switching targets the whole time, but I'm trying to hide it out here because I think he knows, like, there's a cypher, and I'm like, oh, wait, he's here. Oh, gotta run. Uh, but then he switches targets to me. Yeah, he, he, he switched towards me, and I still have all my bees. Well, not all my bees. I, I have a good amount of bees, and what I try to do here is I try to go up here, and then... Yeah, I try to bait him to throw his axe. I don't get it, unfortunately. So I'm just kind of flying around here, and I think I run into him here. Yeah, he actually, like, goes around to the other side. I was actually so surprised about that. But it didn't matter because the cypher was primed. And then, B moment. B moment. And I just, I go away from the door to hopefully make him chase me. And the thing is, uh, he doesn't. Um, or I think he does. No, he doesn't. But he teleports, actually. I think the other two, they go and hide. So, we, okay, what we gotta do here is we gotta split up. Uh, the other two will be at one exit gate. And Composer and I will be at the other. And I, ass I assume he's coming over here. And then I do indeed see him. Uh, he's running over here. But then he teleports. He teleports. So, I drop my bees here uh, to help give us a little bit of distance. But I don't really think it matters. I actually want to see something here. Hold on. Okay, I think he hit the wall. But, yeah, I stop him with my bees there for a second. And then I pull him back once I see that they get hit. But I want to know if when he goes for his big dash, can he dash through the entomologist bees? I imagine that he can. But he's trying to catch up here. But the thing is, we are all here. I love this because we all were like just barely making it to the door. It didn't matter. Like any chip hits he got, it didn't matter. And we all escape at once. I thought that was so funny. We all like escape at the exact same time. And it was a four escape. 
with a cannon team. I just thought it was so silly because we literally all escaped at like the exact same time. Oh, it was so silly. Nothing super special in the game, but I thought it was pretty fun, especially with the cannon team and whatnot. So yeah, that will be it for today, everybody. Thank you so very much for watching. And also, thank you for 5,000 subscribers. We just recently hit 5,000 subscribers uh, on the channel. That's so awesome. I'll probably make a more important video about that later. So just, once again, a quick little thank you for 5,000 subscribers. And yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.